Hey folks, I'm Red Monster SC, and I'm here to teach you how to quickly locate clusters of quantanium asteroids, and really clusters of any mineable material in the air in Halo. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is actually get to the belt. So let's pull up our star map, and uh, we're currently at Arc L1. We see that uh, the Aaron Halo, it looks like it's about 30 to 50% of the Crusader to Arc Corp orbits. However, uh, it is actually closer to 10%. It's very, very close to the Crusader orbit. So we're going to jump out to Crew L3. And we're going to kind of estimate, although there are uh, tables available, uh, I'll put a link to them in the description that show the exact distances where the belt starts and stops. Um, so. We got ourselves aligned. Let's go ahead and jump towards Crew L3. And uh, once we start our jump, we'll pull up the star map and just watch until we're about at that 10% mark. To Crew L3, we'll be close to 14.8 million away. So we'll keep an eye on that. jumped out and we are now in the asteroid belt. If you think it's not densely packed enough or it's too dense, uh, look at those ranges. You can jump another 100,000 kilometers and uh, try and get in a more densely packed. This will be actually probably pretty good for our purposes. Now that we're in the belt, uh, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. The first is that you'll notice rocks that are pointing towards the sun. All we can see is the dark backside, and these are going to be very difficult to spot against the backdrop. Um, those rocks that are actually uh, opposite the sun, uh, we're seeing the brightest, most illuminated face, uh, and we want to head that direction. Now, uh, the best way to do that is just to point your butt to the sun. You can estimate this in third person just by looking at your ship's shadow. Uh, however, you can also use the look behind button to get yourself aligned properly. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with that, um, in your options and key bindings, there is a look behind button. It is not found by default for keyboard and mouse, but I am using a joystick. It's under those vehicles, seats, and operator modes, and look behind. So you'll see on my joystick, I have that bound to button 22, which is kind of a right uh, upper trigger on my joysticks. So we'll align the yaw axis is normal, but our pitch axis is inverted. So just point your butt directly at the sun, and that'll maximize visibility for these rocks as we start scanning. Now, the second thing to keep in mind is you want to make sure the direction you're heading, it, you're not going to hit a rock eventually, because the majority of the time we're out here scanning, we're actually not going to be looking directly forward. We're going to be looking off, of the, off to the side, uh, since that maximizes the parallax effect. These closer rocks will appear to be moving faster, and further rocks will be moving slower against that backdrop. Um, third, we're going to start moving and we're going to keep it at SCM speed uh, just since we're going to end up corkscrewing uh, throughout the uh, throughout the asteroid belt uh, as part of this visual scan um, and then uh, decoupled mode will help us preserve our fuel so here we are uh, heading about SCM speed decoupled it's 150 meters a second you can already kind of see this uh, parallax effect starting to work uh, and then uh, one other thing I do is as I am going, I actually rotate the ship slightly uh, since uh, this will give me, you, know, you can scan in one angle pretty, pretty accurately and get a nice swath, but corkscrewing allows you to get a lot more visibility. So now that we're moving, let's talk about some other considerations. We want to use our ship interface, this HUD, uh, to help align ourselves because when you're zoomed in, uh, and you are going to be using this zoom. It's difficult when you bounce out to remember where you were looking when you spotted those rocks. So the best thing I've found is to actually look where you can use this HUD as a potential indicator. Uh, when you find a rock cluster, you can align this element up over the rock. And then when you zoom out, you know exactly where it's at. Um, so what we're going to do as we scan is we're going to use the F, hold F, or whatever your interact button is, 
and you use the scroll wheel uh, to zoom in all the way, and this maximizes the draw distance. So I'm going to look off here, I'm going to use this thrust indicator as kind of a visual reference, and I'll have this open area here that I will actually use to scan. So now as we're going, we're going to just start rotating. And here's some examples. So out here, this is a three rock cluster, um, which we may want to go mine, or we can go look for larger clusters. And we just do this rotation. Here's a good example of another rock cluster. These are a little bit too far spread out to be Quantanium, but if you're out in a prospector uh, just looking for anything mineable, you can usually get a good percentage off of one or two of these rocks and uh, fill up and head back. Here's another example, a five rock cluster that's a little bit further out. Uh, what's interesting is that this actually gives you a lot bigger range. If I were to ping right now, those rocks that are off this direction actually are not showing up in the ping. So they are outside beyond this 10 kilometer range. Uh, I've been able to spot rocks as far out as about 50 kilometers, um, just based on kind of estimating the distance until they started to show up on scan. Uh, but that's one to keep in mind. Here's an example of a cluster. These are a little bit more spread out, so they won't be quantanium, but if you're looking for, you know, what is that, a seven, seven rock cluster? If you're looking for other materials, a seven rock cluster like that would be enough to fill your prospector pretty easily, uh, and you might be able to pull a mole load out of that. Here's another example of a cluster. Here we have seven rocks, uh, pretty dispersed, so it's not going to be quantanium, but again, something that could fill a prospector or a mole if you're not worried about what material you're mining. Keeping an eye on our thrust indicator. Again, we see right here, that looks like a nice tight cluster of asteroids. So I'm gonna put it right underneath my thrust indicator. And when I zoom out, I can use that to align to those same group of asteroids. And they should be directly in front of me. There's a bit of a rock hiding behind them. We go get these scanned. You can uh, try and scan these with uh, scanning mode or just pull out your laser. And uh, one thing you want to look for uh, is Quantanium will have orange marbling. And we do see that on these rocks. So, I'm pretty happy with this result. Go ahead and uh, let the mining laser scan it. And hopefully, one of these will have a good amount of quantanium in it. It's a 5%, 2%. In general, uh, you want to find 25% uh, or better. Uh, that's enough to fill a prospector with a single rock. And a mole, you can get, uh, if you can get two or three of those uh, at 25% or better, uh, you'll be able to get a good load off of that. So there we have a 23%. I think that would be a one to mine right now. Another 2%. A 10%. In case we don't fill up on the 123% or we could try and break that. 2%, a 27%, and this final rock is a 30%. So we have a 30%, a 27%, and a 23% along with a 10%. So uh, the mass on these can probably take care of it with my prospector, uh, but I will be pretty full. Uh, however, if we ran into a cluster like this with a mole, uh, we'd be able to get a pretty good haul. And that's it. Well done, folks. Happy mining.